Hello. Hi guys. Uh, we've swapped sides and I don't know how I feel about it. Switch things up a bit. I um... A lot of people watching this, it's like Ant and Deck, they won't know which of us is which because <laughs> we're not the right way around anymore. So to save confusion, I'm Chris, this is Ellie. Hi guys. Um, yeah, it's weird. Uh, and I don't know why it sort of became that I always sat there, but uh, like since we moved to this camera, I always sat there and I genuinely don't know how I feel about this. It feels feels weird. Yeah, um, so I thought it'd sort of be helpful to throw you off your game. Yeah. That'd be a useful thing to do. Yeah, I've mentioned that I'm a little bit OCD and uh, I'm not actually like sort of using that lightly. I do have some compulsions that I'm a bit obsessive about <laughs> and I don't like this. <laughs> Should we swap back? <laughs> no, it's okay. Sure? I've got to I've got to challenge myself, Chris. I've got to push my boundaries. <laughs> um but hi guys, yeah. Uh so uh yeah, it's day one hundred and twenty three of our lockdown and it's the twenty first of July, which is a Tuesday. It is. Um tomorrow marks quite a landmark for me. Uh as tomorrow I'm going into work. Mm. I'm not actually like customer facing tomorrow. We're still not open, but there's lots of stuff I have to do on site to get us ready uh, before uh, we're able to do that. Uh, mm. So I need to go in uh, and start sort of uh, sort of changing some props and going into the rooms. Uh, so I'm at the escape rooms for anybody who doesn't know. Um, and yeah, so I've got to sort of go into the rooms and remove unnecessary props or remove props that won't be easy to sort of disinfect between games because we're opening bookings soon. Uh, we have extended the gaps between games so that there's time to disinfect the room. But being as we want to sort of do all touch surfaces, if there's lots of clutter in the room, that's going to be quite a big job. Um, so I'm going to have to declutter and remove some stuff, which I'm not entirely happy about, actually. But like, you know, COVID safety, I will take the hit. Uh, but yeah, like I'm sort of a bit of a stickler for um realism and mm. it's sort of feeling authentic so actually we kind of screw quite a lot of people who are into escape rooms over because the tendency with escape rooms if you've never done them is that you will lose you will use everything in the room at some point basically or it'll be hiding something mm. or almost always mm. everything will be relevant that ain't the way i play it basically everything in the room will make sense in the story there'll be nothing in there at all that's not part of it so I don't have any like stickers saying do not touch or this is not part of the game or any of that because I hate it because again, realism. Breaks the reality. Yeah, right? um, but there Breaks will be the lots of stuff in there that's sort of just stuff that the characters that have been in that space would own and have and uh, so there is a lot of flavour and colour that's not necessarily going to be part of actually um, solving the room. Uh, that's still going to be the case, but just, yeah, if there's a lot of, for, particularly with Host, Host uh, okay. is a sci-fi room and it's sort of set in a lab, uh, in a quarantine lab, uh, and without sort of saying too much about the set, uh, it is clear on entry that shit's hit the fan. Uh, and there's loads of stuff just in the room uh, that you've got to kind of uh, sift through, I guess. Um, so I'm going to have to scale that back a bit. And also um, I've got to sort of remake some props and laminate some paperwork so that it's wiped clean and disinfectable and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, quite a big job actually ahead of us over the next week or so. Um, we've got a little group, uh, some friends of ours booked in for next Monday night. So they're going to be sort of my first... A uh, dry run of COVID testing, but there will also be customers, so I can sort of be a bit like, oh yeah, is there like, is there anything that sort of any blind spots, anything that I haven't thought of, or or whatever in terms of, oh yeah, when we do this, it's like you know, so just to sort of do a dry run. So tomorrow will be my first day in work in the actual building since the nineteenth of March. And it's twenty first of July. Uh, sorry, twenty yeah, twenty first well, of July today. I'll... That blows my mind that is an insane amount of time not to have been away. the building itself has been visited my brother David is my business <coughs> partner and he's popped in because his other job is also in town so he's already been there but I haven't made any unnecessary trips to go in well I was gonna uh, ask you about this actually because mm. obviously we've already said we're gonna try and keep this going in some form or another mm -hmm. and let's see what it becomes going forward and so keep liking and subscribing guys there's no shame in it but uh, this is kind of a momentous vlog in a way because it's kind of the last one before you your lockdown as it were yeah. is kind of going to be over you're returning to work yeah i'm tomorrow. not going to be locked not going to have down in anymore yet, but... um so yeah that is pretty momentous because 
kind of we started the lockdown vlog before the uk wide national one was in mm. so we kind of went from so i think the national announcement came on monday the 23rd of march and actually um we started this vlog i think our first entry was saturday the 21st in the evening the day before that had been my last official day when i could have been at work and that was the day they officially closed leisure industry tour like tourism leisure pubs bars restaurants so we were included in that so that was the last day that we would have been allowed to be open but actually nobody basically that book that whole week um normally they say uh, i'm not sure actually how many bookable slots let's say 20 there was one booked in that that week anyway because i think everybody kind of was taking the message of we should be staying <coughs> home but because it wasn't mandatory um, we wouldn't have been able to close and have sort of any sort of business interruption cover or anything like that because uh, technically it would have been our choice to close. So we welcomed the opportunity, uh, not the opportunity, the, the sort of um, the announcement that we had to because at least then that meant we could close off because at the time I also didn't really feel like it would have been very um, ethical for me to be encouraging people to come. It felt sort of a bit like, well, actually, I think people should be staying at home. So mm. um, I, d I sort of definitely not going to do any promotion to, to try and get you here. But also, obviously, that means like I'm opening up and I'm running like a business that I'm actively hoping people don't spend money in, which isn't the game. Um, so, well, it was yeah. a similar vibe with comedy of sort of going, yeah. seeing gigs getting cancelled and going, if they do go ahead, is it safe for me to travel? Do I want to go? You know, don't want to be encouraging people out to see things, but also the pubs haven't been told they can shut, mm. so or some of the venues. So, you know, is it helping support the livelihood of that bar and its staff by still yeah. putting a gig? It's, it's yeah, a it difficult was very, kind of position um, that everyone was put in, really. Yeah, every, like it was very. Uh, I, I was I was very sort of um, split. I was very torn uh, as to what I should be doing. <clears throat> now, however, um, being where we're at, obviously, like uh, coronavirus is still very much in the population. It's still it's still very much a real threat. But I do feel that now. Um, everybody is so much more aware and so much more um, alert to what they need to be doing and sort of social distancing is almost coming natural sort of at least in public uh, until you're drunk uh, and sort of hand hygiene I think is so rich and there's so many opportunities every everywhere has hand sanitizer and I think it's sort of become more habitual and I feel pretty confident that actually of any type of business that we are one that we can open pretty damn safely, as safe as anything is, because it'll literally be that those members of staff uh, and those players for that game will be the only people on site that is not mixing with other people. Um, they should only be from uh, blended households or households, um, and we should be able to maintain distance with them. Uh, mm. And uh, after they leave, we can just disinfect everything. So actually, I think... In terms of COVID safety, I don't feel like it would be a bad thing for me to be um, encouraging people to come out. And hopefully, lots of people will be pretty keen to get out, I'm hoping. Um, so it'll be interesting because we haven't actually sort of announced the date that we're open from. So we haven't actually gone, right, bookings now open. But today I also had another landmark of having sort of made an announcement that we're nearly ready to reopen. Um, that started some discussion, which was what I sort of hoping, so that when we actually do press go, people will be ready to book. Um, that I've had actually my first booking inquiry in all those many months, in those 123 <clears throat> days. Um, so that feels quite good. I feel quite good about that, and it's sort of it's a bit daunting, and I'm a bit nervous that people might just not come. <laughs> but uh, at least it'll be the option will be open, and people can if they want to. So I'm hoping they do. So uh, we'll let you know when we actually set the date that we are open from. Um, but as I say, next Monday is our first kind of trial run uh, with actual human people. Um, so hopefully, maybe the week after that, we'll be ready to go in at least some form. Um, we will be adding extra services that we can offer down the line, but we should at least be able to open with the two rooms that we already had running that have been adapted. So that's the plan. Um, so that's what I'm, so I'm going, I'm leaving the house tomorrow and going into town, which well, I, I, well, I've not done. I've not been in town since March. That's true. You've been even more tightly locked down than I have. Yeah, I haven't been there. I, basically, I, like, I've been to one or two friends' houses and I've been to on, many vets' visits. Early on, you went to the, uh, the Tesco a couple of times when yep. I couldn't. 
But it's, I mean, when was the last time you even went to a, a Tesco? Even like the small shop up the road or anything? Months. Months? Easily two wow. months. Gosh. So yeah, so tomorrow is quite pivotal for I was, me. I was going to ask you, mm. is there anything about lockdown that kind of, when we went into it, mm. did you have certain preconceptions that haven't kind of been met? Anything that is different from what you were kind of expecting? Um, it's been less strict than I was expecting. I saw mm. my imagination based on sort of the stories that were coming out of other countries. Um, but admittedly, that was coming out of countries like China, which is much more authoritarian and, and that sort of thing, that I thought it was going to be, essentially, you are locked down to the house. But even in some other European countries, yeah. like Italy and, and Germany, Italy, they were a lot more they kind were, of... Yeah, so I was sort of picturing it being like, if you leave the house, you have to have, like... Because actually some places had, like, one nominated member of the household <coughs> was the one that was able to go to the shops. Mm. And, like, I don't know how they actually did it. Maybe there's, like, a rationing system or a rationing book of, like, this is my one free pass for the day kind of thing. Um, so, actually, I think I was imagining it feeling more locked in. But, actually, just the ability to sort of go out for a walk, if you wanted to do... Um, made it feel less so um, and obviously on, on a personal level I was not anticipating uh, looking after a, a very sick injured cat no and being no. like confined to a small cell for about eight weeks of lockdown that was a surprise that was a fun little treat for us that was um yeah pop it if for anybody who hasn't lo- watched the early vlogs is one of our cats and she came in one night with a very very visibly broken back leg mm. um which needed an operation actually ended up having two operations and weekly vet's visits to check on how it was healing. Um, mm. Also, because she wasn't allowed to walk on it, we had to confine her to a small space, which unfortunately meant that we needed to, one of us to be confined to that small space. Because also, together. if she were to wee on her dressing, that was another immediate emergency vet's trip, which and, we could not afford. And in that small space, we had to remove most of the furniture, didn't we? Yep. So she wasn't tempted to kind of try and jump up onto things. So we were sat so, on the floor. Yeah, we padded the room out. Oh. It was probably comfortable by cat standards, but not by human. No, you were sat eating our dinner off our laps, watching an iPad, just unable to get comfortable yeah. at all. But funnily enough, that, that I was think grim. was a turning point for the vlog in a way, because we started then, A, it was a bit of extra commitment to just keep going with it, to keep yeah. doing that and find a way for the two of us to do that, or um, whether yeah. it was doing it in the room with a cat or, fi- or like trusting her alone for half an hour to do it. It was a bit of extra commitment to get it done. Mm. And I think it also was a point in us just going, oh, shit, vet bills. <laughs> yeah. And started taking this a bit more seriously in terms of sort of going, guys, if you could help us out with a coffee account, and vet, and so, which before we'd been, treat, been treating it, I guess, a bit more like a video. Yeah, diary. so it'd be interesting, so, actually, to look back on the early ones. A while back, I think it was during uh, Poppet being in her little room, I started watching back some of the early ones mm. just to sort of see how mm. I'd been then and how things were now. And, and it, it's a very different beast uh, back then, it very much started as a video diary, really. Mm. Um, and I think it's emerged into whatever this is, which is mainly us to waffling about we stuff. We don't know. I've, um, I've I still don't us, know what this is. I've described us before as like a lo fi Richard and Judy. <laughs> Richard and Judy? So like... I thought it was Phil and Holly. Oh, I've yeah, had a downgrade lo-fi, there, haven't I? Lo fi Phil and Holly. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, no, I'll, I'll go with that. I'd rather be Phil yeah, and Holly. That's yeah. fair enough. I love Holly Willoughby. But, uh, I love her. I think I want to be her friend. Oh, but then you no, you wouldn't want to be her friend. I would want to be her friend. No. Why wouldn't I want to be her friend? Because her friend is Fern Cotton, and she's got soulless dead eyes. What's wrong with Fern Cotton? Oh, she's the worst. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I, well, maybe I could replace Fern. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you can be Holly Willoughby's friend if you oust Fern Cotton. Okay. So it was like um, some sort of, like, battle royale, like, battle to yes, the death thing. Definitely. like. I, like, I have to I, fight for the right to be Holly Willoughby's best. I think I'd rather see you fight Holly Willoughby. Than, than Fern Cotton. Cotton. I see, okay. I, that's preference. a different thing there that you're talking about, isn't it? I didn't bring it up. So, I think the two things that I have, 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 uh, that have been different for me than I was expecting our lockdown experience to be mm. is that at first there was very much a sense of like, oh, you know, we were making our own Verdi because we didn't have pasta, so we were kind of making like a pasta we. substitute. We. Uh, I did not do any of that. fruit crumble, doing a lot of homemade. 
not that we weren't cooking a bit beforehand, but like a bit more extra cooking and Again, homemade. bless your heart for keep using but we. Like, it's so him. A bit. I think there was more of a sense of like kind of blitz spirit of like, oh, we're gonna be locked down and we're gonna have to kind of make do and kind of use what's in the cupboards and whatever. And and like home cooking is gonna be. Like, I like cooking anyway, but um, def- very good definitely cook. as time went on and kind of things normalized a bit over the months, there's been much more of a sense of no, it's all right. You don't have to worry. Mm. We're not gonna run out of food, and we can definitely just keep getting frozen pizzas yeah. from well, the supermarket. To begin That's with, still an like, option, yeah, yeah. Get, shopping was um, difficult. So, like there was, there were empty shelves, and they were you could not order online. Like there was just no delivery slots at all, mm. um, and you did have to kind of accept alternatives and think on your feet but actually and before we started doing online weeks, orders and stuff because yeah. there's only a small shop near us you were, were a bit constricted of like well I've, I've got an idea of what i want to cook but if it's not there in the little yeah. shop i'm gonna have to think on my feet and just make yeah. do and um, but yeah i think like just the sort of supply chain issues they really i think what they said which is actually true was if everybody stopped panic buying <clears> and <throat> stockpiling that there would have never been a problem anyway. It was just because people were like, oh, we're going to be locked down. We might not be able to get to the shops. We'd better stockpile. Which, and I don't like, think I we get. did really. We, I mean, we made sure the pet food. We, sort of, we made sure the freezer was full. Yeah. You know, but just like you would a yeah. general big shop. Well, um, that, we, we don't do a big shop very often anyway. No. So we always kind of did that. But we yeah. didn't go crazy for any particular specific items. No. Like, uh, I mean, the one thing I think we, or I was particularly sort of worried about was pet food so yeah. I made sure we had a lot of that yeah well that's um, slightly because we did actually have to make do quite a few times with pet food and, and give the cats different brands that they don't use like and cats are dickheads I don't really know picky. have you ever tried cats guys because I, I yeah. highly recommend them but they are dickheads Oh. Um, like so, a couple of times slogan. we'd we'd buy and like they, they, I love them, but they're dickheads. I, I recommend cats; they're dickheads. <laughs> but like, yeah, so they would be picky with their food. So, um, knowing that you get like if you could get the stuff that you know they'll eat, you kind of want to stockpile that. And Lucy, our Labrador, she's a separate little problem because she is a Labrador, so she would eat the entire contents of the world if left to her own devices. Mm. So because she's got a massive appetite, but she does get fat, um, uh, she is on like uh, she gets a certain food yeah, that's she's lower right, calorie. Because she's like restricted to how many meals she's allowed a day. Yeah. But the cats we basically feed when they ask. Yeah. And the little ones. It's amazing how much food they can put away. It's like proportional to Just their body size. It's really... like it would be like me eating an entire turkey and the, all the Christmas I mean, dinner there, trimmings to myself. There were there have been points where I've started to get a bit panicked about how quickly they're getting the food through <laughs> the food we bought for them. But um, but yeah, and the other the other thing that I think was different to what I was expecting our lockdown experience to be, and this is very this isn't um, this is very kind of specific to us. Mm. But I thought we were going to play a lot more board games. Yeah, I did too. Um, and we were before the poppet leg situation. We were a bit, weren't we? Because um, um, what? Because we're quite into our board yeah, games. Yeah, we, we play board games. But we have people round for games nights. Mm. But also, we we have a lot of games that we can play just the two of us. We tend to play them a lot, uh, and we enjoy doing it. But often, what happens is, you know, one or other of us will be slightly too tired from work to play a board game. Um, and so you end up just going, oh, should we not? Tonight? We'll just watch a bit of telly, which is fine. We like telly too. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, we don't play as many board games as we perhaps would like in the normal run of things just because, you know, the working day leaves you a bit tired, you know, and you just think, oh, I can't. It's a bit concentrated, isn't it? Yeah. You have to focus and pay attention and some of them run on a bit so you can't you can't do like half an hour and then be like I'm too no, tired no some of them are pretty epic actually kind of things commit. like well funnily enough also one of the sort of better I think cooperative games that works quite well for two people is Pandemic but funnily enough yeah I mean, not I'm not really been I'm not surprised that. that we're not been in the mood for that I, know, I, um, I think like sales of that have probably done really well I'm sure there's a lot of people doing ironic yeah, uh, it's a really good play. game. Actually, it is a though. really good game. But if you're not really into board been... games, one thing that sort of stands out about it is you play it with uh, up to six. I think you can play it together, mm. but you can play it with just two. Uh, but the thing is, you're it's cooperative. You you guys are working as a team against <clears> the game. So either you save the world or you don't. But that's quite nice because it's sort of a, a different dynamic to what most people think of when they think of board games. I, as you know, am quite competitive. So I think have I think I'm okay actually when it's just sort of board games and mm. stuff. Um but actually I think it's probably quite nice to have something that we work on together rather than like yeah. against each We've other got a that we're like keeping score. Ones, we, that are mm. good. 
But because yeah, but we definitely haven't played as many as I thought. I don't. Uh, there's no particular reason for it. Particularly, we just have done. We've done lots of other fun fun things instead. I think mm. I'm just. You know, you start to think that because with you going back to work and things, you start to think of it. It also almost starts to feel like the end of a summer holiday. And of course, and and when you're a kid and it's the end of the summer holiday, you always think more about the things that you didn't get around to doing yeah. than the things you actually did do. Yeah. Like you've had six weeks that've been really fun and you've do, done loads of stuff, but all you can think about is, oh, I didn't do this and I didn't do the other. But uh, I can think of one uh, other thing though that is sort of something that I didn't know was going to sort of happen during lockdown, which is that I was going to come out of it no longer your girlfriend. That's true. Sorry to break it to you this way, guys. But, uh, <laughs> Beyonce! Um, But yeah, like, I guess you didn't think that was going to happen in lockdown at that Um, point. Did you just sort of think, oh, when we're out of lockdown? Because you had other plans. I I was just really, because I didn't know at any point furlough would end or I'd get called back into work or quite what the situation was. Mm. You know, it was all, I mean, it's all been quite up in the air for a long time now. It feels normal because it's been going on for so long. But at the same time, it's never really been kind of a long term oh, knowing what's going to happen. When so the initial think... lockdown went in, and then like a, a little while later, they sort of announced like the furlough scheme and like the grant scheme for businesses and stuff like that. They sort of initially said, um, okay, so these schemes will go to June. And that sounded so far in the future at that point. And it was just like, so when we didn't know what we were doing with lockdown, we didn't know how it was going to be. That sounded so far away. And it was just like, surely we'll be back to normal after June. Mm. Um, but here we are, um, 21st of July. Uh, I'm going, as I say, back to work. No sign of when you're going back to work as yet. And lots of places are still very much running either limited hours or not opening at all. I think the 3rd of August in Wales is quite a landmark date because that's when most uh, most <coughs> types of businesses can open indoors uh, with limited capacity and with social distancing measures and that sort of thing. But that's kind of when most people, I think, will... Oh, if you want to go to the pub, you can go to the pub. If you want to go to a restaurant, you can go to a restaurant. If you want to go to the cinema, etc. And that, I think, maybe is a sign that, like, although actually I think a lot of people will probably be kind of almost permanently working from home nowadays, I think, like, quite a lot of offices and sort of jobs where you can work from home have adjusted. But I wouldn't be surprised if quite a lot of sort of business lets actually downsize and, and make it more the norm that maybe not all of your workforce but maybe mm. like a flexible hot desk system kind of thing for like certain days you're in and certain days you work from home because people have been and it's overall worked and like uh, like the, the backdrop of a global pandemic isn't really the best sort of way to judge it but actually i think generally speaking having the options to work from home are pretty good for people's well-being as employees so and i can sort of see environment yeah it's good for the environment things, so. good for sort of um just yeah like well-being in general um flexibility it sort of opens up opportunities for other sort of aspects of life that you can't really do if you're tied to your desk sort of certain rigid hours um uh, like ha- being able to have a pet for example like people who work from home were like well I can still get a dog and on my lunch break I'll give it a little walk at lunchtime and mm. uh, and I can sort of have that sort of life because um, actually that was one of the that you are the most obsessive cat person I've ever met and it's adorable but you it's fine there's no shame in that there's no know, shame I, in that I, I, I cats, thought so I, I feel like I could take a leave oh <laughs> bullshit <laughs> That is the biggest pile of bullshit. Um, yeah, no, it's adorable. Um, but you had obviously never been able to sort of get cats for all oh. the years that you sort of lived in Wales and lived sort of away from home and away from uni because you work in a sort of in <clears throat> where you work all day, every day, and then you quite often gig at night. If you had a job where you could work from home, you would have probably got a cat years ago. Yeah. You'd have moved in with a cat, but instead you, we moved you in and then got more. Nice. It's oh, worked out very well for yeah. me. But uh, I think it's worked out pretty sweet for me as well. Yeah, I don't know how it is it is relocating cats. If I already had had cats and I had to move them in here with your cats. They're not they're certainly not fans of moving in with other cats. Mm. Um but it's doable. But yeah, it would be well, we moved two kittens in and, and you saw how the adult cats sort of were not sort of thrilled about that, but gradually, sure. reluctantly accept it. I mean, if we can nurse a cat for a broken leg, I think we can do anything cat-wise. Yeah. That's how I feel. Let's crossbreed them with tigers. We had so many news stories to talk about today. Oh, we haven't God. talked about anything, have we? Um, well, was, there's a couple of things that we should mention. And actually, it's sort of a shame to mention them, because this has been quite a happy vlog. Yeah. Um, but 
Fuck me. Uh, right, yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ. Guess who's ruined it for everyone again? <sighs> the Tories. It's the fucking it's Tories, so, isn't it's it? It's only the bloody Tories, oh, guys. Oh, God, what a shocker. Do you remember um, when they were telling you to protect the NHS? Yeah. Bunch of hypocrites. Absolute pile of fucking horse shit. I'm so angry and sad and uh, filled with righteous vitriol about all of this. So if you don't know the story that we're referring to, there are a few you could choose from. But actually the main one is that there was a bill um, going through Parliament, um, uh, I think, it, was it actually yesterday or was it today that they um, voted? I think I saw it this morning, it said like eight th- hours ago. Maybe yeah, I think it might have actually around. happened yesterday and the news sort of broke of it today. Um, which was a bill that was uh, designed uh, to make it um, take it off the table that it could be possible for the NHS to be used in trade talks or for any part of it to be controlled by any foreign company, country, body. And overwhelmingly, with their 78-seat majority, despite pretty much everybody else pretty much voting against, uh, like Mm. voting for this bill, the Tories voted it down. Essentially, they, I can see no justification for that. They cannot argue that that is in the British interest to allow any say in what happens in the NHS to be made overseas. I don't care who by, that is not for the good of the British people. Well, and anyone who voted Tory, when you have to start paying for your medical bills, or even worse, People who didn't vote Tory have to start paying for their medical bills. As someone with a lifelong chronic illness, when I have to start paying for my medication or choose not to take it anymore, that's a real choice that I might have. That is a choice that might mean that I don't have to, I can't work anymore. I'll have to hand over my business to someone else because I won't be well enough to run it. That is just me. I am the thin end of the wedge. People will be, like we see in America, literally calling Ubers to take them to the uh, to the hospital when they're going into labour because they don't want to have the fee for an ambulance and shit like that. Because it's like $4,000 for oh, an ambulance. Oh, something ridiculous. And, and, and it's just like, it, like, this is the thin end of the wedge. And I can't see any justification for it that could even vaguely pretend that this is in the interest of the British people. In America, they have health insurance, and that is a deeply kind of flawed system that doesn't help or cover everyone. But at least that is a system that has been in place for, like, decades. Mm. You know, whereas over here, we do not have the infrastructure for that. We do not have the, um, kind of, we're not prepared to kind of fund that out of our wages. You know, people, that's not built into people's uh, salaries or wages or income to kind of be able to pay as well for health insurance on top of all the other bills and things that we already and expenses we already have um people on minimum wages just won't be able to do that it's just it's... taking a massive step backwards for one of the sort of like really genuinely uh, we were one of the first uh, countries to implement a um sort of nationalized healthcare system and it was and the envy of the world they still have statues to anara and bevin mm. because he because it's you know the nhs is something that we should be really so... proud of in this country they will bullshit us and say, oh, this isn't, like, we're not going to privatise the NHS. That's not what's happening. Because they've said that from the word go. Why but, not pass a law that protects that from happening? Then, yeah. If what, you don't want to do it, it. What's in it for you to give it, give, basically giving away control of the NHS to other parties, whoever mm. the fuck they are. Basically, there's money to be made for someone. And what I, and, like, and I don't want to sound like the tinfoil hat brigade here, but I predict that the covid crisis will be used as justification for the strain on the nhs was just too much to take so we had to sell it off we had to privatize it it's It's a national tragedy that couldn't be avoided and it's but they've been planning this from the word go and i I, tinfoil hat brigade fuck that hashtag corbyn was right is trending on twitter because this is what he had the receipts in the live debate with Boris Johnson, he went, this is proof that you are talking about uh, negotiating trade deals with Trump and putting the NHS on the table. And Boris Johnson said no. And all of the right wing press went, oh, what a loony he is and what a conspiracy theorist. Well, he was fucking right. He well, was fucking right. And our friend Sam mm. uh, on Facebook today was furious because she was sort of saying, well, I went around before the election knocking on doors hours every day trying to convince people to vote Labour 
and you know and people didn't believe in Jeremy Corbyn and they believed in Boris and now this has happened and frankly saying hashtag Corbyn was right is too little too late like if you're coming to that realization now at this late stage it's no and, and also yeah well, the thing is they've got five more years in power so the amount of damage that they can do before anybody will potentially have the ability to and they will not call an election anytime soon because they will want to distance themselves Ooh. from the mess they've made of this whole situation and and also i mean the, the tory government have for years kind of um, been happy to kind of blame problems on kind of immigrants and people coming over here and and you know any problems with our economy or a lack of so jobs or either the or problems anything, they, that were left to them by the previous Labour government which by the way the 2008 global financial crisis was not caused by Labour um but they they're very the point is right is they're very happy to kind of blame immigrants mm. for for lots of things over the years and kind of and and kind of play into that or even if they're not directly blaming them and allowing the public to think that mm. rather than questioning actual government policy and uh, a lot of that ill feeling towards immigrants let's not pretend otherwise played into a lot of the people voting for brexit mm -hmm. you know and the guy who was in charge of the leave campaign mm -hmm. was boris johnson our current prime minister and now he so having basically profited off people's fear of immigrants is now happy you know, oh we don't want people coming over here and working and contributing to the economy but we'll happily sell off the nhs to foreign interests because yeah. those foreigners those are the right foreigners. those are good foreigners not the foreigners who came over here to work and to be doctors and nurses and actually help the nhs um those are the wrong immigrants and, oh, and this is the same angry. this is the same fucking hypocrite it was stood behind a placard for weeks on end that said protect the nhs and apparently we we thought it was protect the nhs so we'd have it for all of our futures but apparently it was just protect the nhs because we want it to look like a worthwhile investment for someone, mm. you know, um, and it's... Yeah, I, I think this is going to, like, this whole period was already going to be a dark time in history that genuinely people will look back on and was part of the reasons why I wanted to document it. Um, this day will go down in history as the day the NHS died, I think. Um, it'll take a while before it like they'll they won't do it overnight. It'll be piecemeal But I will remind anyone who's watching this that the Tories also promised that they wouldn't uh, Privatize the railways and privatize British gas and privatize the water companies because they've got a track here, record Here That's we are. The thing. They People said, said, they they said they... It's, it's never we're never gonna privatize the NHS. We're proud of the NHS. Fuck you. Fuck you oh. And everyone who votes for you because, yeah, there's no consolation in being right. I wanted to be, like, I, for being wrong, I wanted to be proved wrong. And actually, maybe they'd done some good stuff. Mm. Um, but no, here we are. And do you know what they've announced as a sort of, like, distraction tactic from a this? Sort of is attempt at P good PR. Like, we don't want people to talk about that. So we've given um, uh, the key, a bunch of key workers a pay rise. That, not nurses, not junior doctors. Not nurses, not junior doctors, not social care workers, but doctors, teachers, uh, and another group. Can't remember who the other group is. Um, so a group of people have had a pay rise, which is equivalent to higher than the rate of inflation. But Although, this is after 10 years of no pay rises, yes. which actually means they're still paying them less than they would have been if they'd just been giving them pay rises equal to the yeah. rate of inflation all if this time. If you strip out inflation, mm. uh, even after these pay rises, the average wage for a public mm. sector worker will be less than it was in 2010. Yeah, of course. Which is like a decade ago. People are getting paid less now to do their jobs than they were a decade ago, despite a global pandemic. This is how they yeah. repay people, and they try and spin that as a positive thing. And they're excluding... That nurses uh, aren't nurses, in there. Nurses, they're excluding junior doctors, which junior doctors are, is quite a misunderstood term. Yeah. Like, it's not just newly qualified doctors. You can be yeah, a junior doctor. Yeah, you imagine that being, like, like, people in scrubs who have just mm. qualified and they're, like, doing the year of, like, what, what's it called? Like, um, when they sort of do a year, year of kind of rounds and they're just kind of learning on the job. That's not what a junior doctor is. A, jo a junior doctor is any doctor that is not yet a consultant in something. Yeah. So that so could be, be your G, G, like that could be your GPs. That could be all sorts. That's you could like be a junior doctor for sort of. I, I know a junior doctor, and he's um, like very. He's actually he's moved abroad. 
uh, because he didn't want to work in the NHS anymore. And I don't blame him. Fair um, but yeah, he uh, uh, and he's specialised. He's just not a consultant. He's specialised in psychiatry. So that's a um, lot of people excluded from these pay rises. Also, uh, what they haven't done is they've announced these pay rises, but they're not allocating any extra money. No, that's which coming to pay out them. of existing do- departmental budgets. So essentially, now, they mean. You're going to have to make cuts elsewhere to pay these pay rises, but so you're going to have to pay them. Going to work. I don't know how they're going to work it. Are they going to go, right, well, we need to pay uh, these consultants some more money now, so we're going to take that out of medical equipment and supplies? Or are they just going to wait for people to leave and then not hire anyone else um, and then raise everyone's wages and expect them to cover the shortfall and do extra? Because we already know doctors and nurses are run ragged and work incredibly hard. And the same for teachers as well, it, yeah. it uh, has to be said. Uh, and other Particularly sector, right, sector now, like right now, I would not want anyone. to be a teacher right no. now. Um, but and yeah, also, oh all these hospitals and schools, whatever budgets they've got, whatever allocations they've got, they've got to stretch those all the further to pay for new measures they have to put in place for social distancing, mm. you know, whatever things they're having to buy yeah. and put in place. Also, a lot of schools are losing out on money because of money they would make through uh, contributions to kind of after school clubs and things like that, which aren't happening obviously for months now. So they've lost out on a lot of money and it, and it makes it all adds up, but it makes a difference. Oh, God, so, my blood is boiling right now. Yes, yeah, so we had such a lovely <sighs> blog and now we've ended on such a fucking downer. Um, um, yeah, we should probably. It's not our fault, it's the Tory government. Yeah. Oh, we couldn't not mention it, could we? It has to be fuck kind of. The Tories, guys, fuck them. Uh, except don't actually fuck them. Don't let any of them touch your peepees or foofs. That's not happening. Uh, they don't deserve it. Um, I'm so, so angry. And there is no consolation. I'm not. I'm just going to gloss over the fact that I call them peepees and foofs. Um, uh, there's there's no consolation in... It makes you sound like someone who's never seen one in real life. I haven't. <laughs> so, you know. I haven't. I'm not never married seen a foof. yet. I've, never, I've seen a foof, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we, we've um, never seen each other's bits, so have we? Because we're waiting. We're saving ourselves for marriage. Yeah, we're living in sin, but very innocently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just it really does make my blood boil, and like there are still bootlickers out there saying they're doing a great job. And honest to God, like what is it going to take for you dickheads to realise that you've it's been terrifying? Duped? Like how corrupt and incompetent and bad they are at government, and how blind and oblivious people are to it. Like every time that they said protect the NHS. This is a fucking kick in the teeth for that. It's a spit in the eye. They clapped it's for a, them. Yeah. They clapped for them every week, knowing that well this done. was their plan. We'll pay you nearly as much as we did a decade ago. It's fucking intolerable. Uh, and I don't know what we do I don't know how it, they fucking sleep at night. No. Um, soulless psychopaths, the fucking lot of them. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> like and subscribe, guys. Uh, we do need to hit that 100 subscribers, so do please like and subscribe. Uh, if nothing else, you will get to see me get very angry more often, I suspect, before this uh, all comes to a close. Uh, but also, um, well, there'll be some nice stuff as well, hopefully. Hey, uh, so uh, yeah, I haven't got my finger on the button now, so oh, um, is it yeah. Up to me? Oh, I, yeah, I, I, all right. I was wondering why yeah. we hadn't ended about 15 minutes ago. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe guys. guys. There's, there's no, no shame, shame in it. it.